As kids, we all loved tracing with stencils. So let's reignite that love and learn a new flat lay styling technique that will draw all eyes to your subject, just like this. I'm calling this one Negative Shapes. Hey guys, Mandy here. If you've watched my other videos, you know I love the concept of negative space. Negative space is the space around and between the subject or subjects of a photo. In art, negative space is often an actual shape that shares edges with the subject. This image is the classic example of negative space. Depending on how you look at it, it's either a goblet or two faces. In surface-based photography, the definition of negative space is a little more flexible. I like to think of it as the space you leave empty on purpose, rather than the space that just happens to be empty after you're done placing your props. Within the replica method of styling, we most commonly use negative space to create a C composition. These are all examples of the C composition. You can see that the subject and props are placed so that they form a letter C with negative space in the center. I'll link to my C composition video at the end of this and in the caption if you haven't watched it already. Now, let's try something different. Instead of placing larger props to create negative space, let's trace something using small sprinkled objects. This will create a frame for your product. We'll start by creating a circle. First, find a circular object in your home. Ideally, it should be a couple inches larger in diameter than the product you're framing. Great options are plates and bowls since most of us have a couple different sizes. We're gonna use this candle stand. Next, place your object in the center of your surface. For this shot, we're gonna use the Biscotti Linen Replica surface because its texture lends perfectly to the soft look we're creating for our bath salts. Then, sprinkle or lay small objects around the edge of your stencil. Here, we used flower petals. Grocery store bouquets are an economical way to use in-season florals. Other great options are tiny stones, small crystals, loose tea, which is my favorite, pearled barley, or coarse sea salt. You can also use foods that suit the season or the color of your product. For summer, try citrus slices, fresh berries, and green leaves. For fall and winter, try fallen leaves, dried berries, birch bark, tiny pine cones, or artificial snow. Using ingredients that are actually found in your products, like oats or dried lavender, is optional but highly encouraged, just like liking and subscribing are. As a tip, because these flower petals are large, we placed each one around the edge of the stencil in a visually appealing way. We didn't just drop them from above, which would have led to clumping and bare areas. If you're using smaller petals or other small objects like oats, you'll get the best look by sprinkling around the stencil and then sweeping any rogue sprinkles back toward the circle. Next, remove your stencil and voila, you have a perfect circle. If this seems a little basic, just try creating a circle without a stencil. I bet it will take on a wiggly contour or at least will take longer to get right. Finally, place your product in the center and shoot. This photo looks great, but why exactly is that? Let's break it down. First, it keeps the subject the star. The sprinkle creates a frame around your subject, which draws the eye where it needs to be. This can be hard to achieve when you're shooting smaller products like jewelry from overhead. It also shows the important angles of the product. This particular product has a texture and an attractive label, both of which are important selling features to a potential customer. By featuring two subjects, we call that using multiples, the customer sees both features in one photo. This photo also nails the geometry. See how we place the vials parallel to the weave of Biscotti Linen? I recommend placing objects parallel to the lines in your surface design, if there are lines in it, or at a strong diagonal that goes against that grain. Slightly off is not so appealing. Finally, the color coordination is on point. The flower petals match the lighter areas of the rose label beautifully. One killer tip before we move on to the next shape. The circle also works as a beautiful frame for eye level photos. Just do me a favor and imagine the two bath salt vials standing upright in place of the candle stand. 
I didn't realize how good that would look until I saw this photo after we had finished the shoot and cleaned everything up. All right, let's square it up. To create this zoomed in square, first find a square or rectangular object from around the house. Books, framed photos, or baking dishes are all great options. Experiment to see which two edges you prefer. Here are a bunch of different options. Now, place your subject in the half frame you've created. Another great use for this square technique is creating social media or website announcements by adding text to an empty frame. You can use it for banners or to announce sales and events you're having. Finally, try scouring your home for unique shapes like this heart. We created the sprinkle with little pink candy hearts. Cake sprinkles would also work really well. And by the way, you do get bonus points for forming each half out of different objects like we did here. And that's it. Now you're ready to bust out your stencils and start creating negative shapes. Plus, these lovey-dovey photo examples should make you more than ready to batch your Valentine's Day content in a couple months. You can come back and watch this video when it gets closer. And if you feel like liking and subscribing, that's cool too.